Wants to Talking About. I'm John Griffith. I'm Cara Kildoff. And did you guys enjoy the jazzy opening number? <laughs> hey, somebody did that for us. And I know, but it's like jazzy. <laughs> Jazz hands. I had um, some Pepsi, so. You sugared up and caffeinated? <laughs> yes. I'm cheap date. What's up? Uh, just hanging out and having a good time and. How much, uh, how much current events are we doing before we start talking to our spooky guest? Uh, I think uh, the world is going to hell. Uh, get out and vote. Uh, that's current events. The world is not going to <laughs> hell. we got to look for solutions uh, to problems. Which is get out and vote and take part and, and all that good stuff. Yeah. But what's going on in, in the world that you, that you want to throw out there? Oh, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think Kamala Harris is hot. <laughs> okay, well. I just love the way she questions a person. Text her your number. Huh? Text her your number. No. Kamala. <laughs> Sorry. One of my, my girlfriend and I have to stop and say her name because we were saying it wrong. So now I was like, Kamala. So we say it right. Anyway, <laughs> hey dudes. I'm waving hi to my dudes. Yeah, cause, my, yeah, because we are. My dudes up there. Oh uh, yeah, you've been spending a lot of time in Canada. My my dudes up in Canada, up there in uh, that place. <laughs> that place up there. Yeah, up yeah. there. Uh, with the, the border without the wall. Yes, man. The Canadians are so friendly. Once I I walk, step into like their land, and they're just like, so why are you here in Canada? <laughs> no. no. The uh, last time I got the same guy, and I was like, hey, and he just looked at me like, I did make him laugh though. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Which I don't think you're supposed to do. It is what it is. Since okay. I passed my driving test, I made the driver, the, the instructor laugh. Wait, you didn't? Ha you just did this? No, this was like twenty oh. something years ago. I was gonna say. I have a license. I, just, I haven't driven anything in twenty something years. Psh, you better learn um. how to drive a golf cart. <laughs> yeah, Florida. Florida. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, so you and her Nana are gonna be like. Nee, nee, nee. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> That's all right. Hopefully we can get him up here in, in March or April. <laughs> We're going hog time, put some duct tape over his mouth. <laughs> Sorry. No, he'll never come. Uh, Sorry. Sorry, it's the Pepsi. That's and okay. also we have a spooky guest. <laughs> who, who, well, tell us who he is. We have an artist named Stephen Wilson with us today. Hello, Stephen. Welcome. Hello. Thanks for having me. Uh, Steven Spooky. <laughs> no, we were talking before because his um, when Jonathan sent me the email about like who our guests were going to be, he said um, his his work is really good. It's a little, but it's dark. So then I looked. I'm like, well, yes, it is a little dark. And we were talking in the green room, aka the kitchen, that uh, we were joking about it. And he said Spooky. So I just, I don't know. Kind of glommed onto that. Well, because I want to say <laughs> I want to say it like this. Spooky. <laughs> 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 it's the Pepsi and I'm not. <laughs> I don't know. Well, let's let's give one quick example of some of the work, and then we can just kind of bounce off of that. So, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> Joey's on vacation. Can you tell? Anyway, how dare you, Joey? Well, you're, like like we said, your work is a little dark, and here's the, here's the first example. We have some some of this and. Mm -hmm. um, well, where does this come from? Where does, you, where does your thought process develop out of? Um, so lately, a lot of it uh, tends to come from uh, dreams that I tend to have or uh, just general feelings about the world around me kind of a thing. Uh, mental health issues, things like that, anxiety, depression, a lot of different sources that I tend to pull a lot of inspiration from. So that piece that uh, was just shown was for a... Uh, a Dutch black metal band called Black Decades. So okay. they asked me to do a t-shirt design for uh, their appearance last year on at Roadburn in... Um, oh, that's cool. In uh, the Netherlands. Uh, I can't remember exactly where. I think it's Tilburg. But uh, somebody's probably going to yell at me for that. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Well, I was going to ask you, do you do... Because I was looking at a, a lot of the images. Do you wind up doing a lot of cover art for people? Yep. <clears throat> I do album covers, I do t-shirts, posters, uh, band logos, all sorts of stuff like that. So uh, on top of doing all the illustration work, I also uh, do the layout and graphic design and wow. stuff like that. Now, I saw that you have, um, is it a Bachelor of Fine Arts or a BA for, uh, in illustration? A BFA in a illustration. A BFA yep. in illustration. From uh, the School of Visual Arts. So was uh, were your professors kind of... 
I don't know, because when you say you, you have a degree in illustration, people always assume, like, oh, that's you, really nice. You, you that's do children's <laughs> books yeah, and things yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah, and then, and then people see my work, and they're like, Jesus Christ, man, yeah. what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, I've actually heard people say that to me, like, when I'm in a coffee shop and I'm working, they're like, oh, an artist, that must be such a blessing, and then they look at my work, and they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, but you know what? There's something for everyone. Because I was telling, I was telling him in in the green room kitchen, <clears throat> like a friend of mine would really, uh, one of my really good friends would be mm -hmm. so into your work. Mm -hmm. Actually, I know a couple people that would really be into it because that's the kind of thing that they're drawn to, also. Right. So I mean, everybody has has their audience. And the, the the interesting thing too is that a lot of the people that I know through my artwork, like. People are just kind of like, oh man, they must be really intimidating or frightening people, and then you know they, the people that I know through my work are some of the friendliest, kindest people yeah. that I've ever met in my life. So yeah, you know, it's just it's like that's how we process the world around us, and it's it's through our work and through the music that we uh, listen to and things like that. Yeah, well, you're super talented. I mean that. You can't deny that. But I mean, were you always? Did you were you always into drawing when you were a kid? Oh and, yeah. And yep. So was it the same kind of stuff? Um, it, it, did you freak out your teachers? <laughs> yes. It, it eventually got there. Um, but like when I was younger, I would. Uh, oh yeah. Um, that's for uh, my buddy Matt Finney. Uh, his project clawing. Um, where he does spoken word over uh, ambient droning noise stuff made by another friend of mine, uh, Austin Gaines. That's cool. Um, uh, so when I was like maybe three or four years old, like just started coloring books, doing that whole thing, slowly just started drawing. Uh, a lot of my family is pretty artistic, I would say. My sisters, my dad. Um, so, you know, I started at a very young age and I've always been drawing and just doing stuff and then it started turning into like, oh, Mortal Kombat, really like that. So I'd start drawing stuff from that and I wanted to do artwork for video games and things. And then somewhere down the road, I lost my mind and just started working for metal bands. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not losing your mind. Okay, I have a really big question to ask you. So in high school, did you ever carve up a desk and like eh, make it really cool? No. <sighs> But I was always drawing, and everybody was like, geez, Steve, like, what's up? What's going on with you? I'm just like, I don't know. I just We're a like... little concerned. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny because I stumbled across you online, and mm -hmm. it's like I kind of felt you out a little bit first and just see if to see if there was a normal dialogue. Right. And we had that, and then, and then I approached you to come on For sure, a month yeah. or so later. So, yes, he is. He's normal. He's, he's just normal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, like, uh, a lot of the work that I make is just a method of processing, like I, like I said, you know, uh, taking all these different, uh, seemingly disparate lines of inspiration and trying to make something positive out of a negative kind of mm. a thing, you know, like depression, like turning that into something that I can use and, you know, like kind of have it be a pressure release valve or mm -hmm. something that helps me work through like what it is I may be going through in my personal life or something like that. Like if, if a band contacts you and they want you to do like a t-shirt or an album cover, do they just let you have free reign or do they give you like a general idea of what, what they're looking for? Like how does that work? Um, it's a little bit of both. Uh, so when bands tend to get in touch with me, uh, some of them have like a set idea, but then they're kind of like, but we trust you, yeah. you know, with like your, the way that you express a lot of these things. So if you have a better idea or if you can take this somewhere else entirely, go nuts kind of a thing. Uh, but then there are other people who are just like, I'm just really hyped on your work and I just want you to do your thing and so That's cool. here you go. Okay. You know? uh, like the pieces that you're showing right now, uh, this one and then the other one with the giant hand, um, were for a Minneapolis black metal band called False. Mm -hmm. And uh, when uh, Andrew Kishel uh, got in touch with me about doing a t-shirt for them, uh, they were just like, yeah, just uh, send us sketches, figure out what it is that like speaks to you based on our music, and we'll go with it. So I went with uh, something like related to the Mother Maiden Crone imagery in, uh, mm -hmm. in witchcraft. That's really cool. I, I, that's, did you ever <laughs> think that you, <clears throat> excuse me, 
Did you ever think you were gonna make your living doing what you like, w doing what you love, being able to? God no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like you know, people would often tell me like, oh, man, like I don't know if you could do anything with this. Like I've actually heard that from a couple of people, mm. and it's like I can understand that line of thinking, so I don't really hold a grudge about it. But, right, it's like, limited. You know, like it's it is very prohibitive. You know, a lot of people it's, don't get it from. It's specific. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's very specific. Right. Yeah, uh, I think if somebody approached you to redesign the Twinkie packaging, it would probably not throw gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, no. I don't throw think the you would be into that anyway. <laughs> no. It's like, we're gonna make Twinkies black. Yeah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Oh, that's so gross. <laughs> I'm, whatever, I was thinking what would come out with you. Anyway, um, sorry. When you went to, when you, when you were going to college, because I heard this a lot too, where people like, how are you gonna make a living? What kind of job are you gonna get doing that? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I think it, a lot of it has, it, 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 art has this like stigma that it's uh, for enjoyment kind of a thing and not like as a career kind of a thing with a lot of people. So some people tend to be like, uh, what are you gonna do with this? How are you gonna do all of these other things? And you know, I'm already existing on the fringes of society kind of a, kind of a thing. So it's like, you know, I knew that my life was never gonna be normal. I guess. And, and you know, like, what does that even mean, normal? Right. You know, yeah. you're just, you just think differently than other people do, For sure. you know? And, and that's... Because you're that's normal. Me. Right. Yeah. You know? And I mean, I'm already gay, so there's that, you know? So, like, I work with... Oh, my with, God, you are? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that? Um, <laughs> but, uh, like, you know, I make stuff for weird bands, and I'm, I, I already, like, kind of walk out of sequence with what is generally considered normal, so, you know. I just think life is more interesting when mm -hmm. you're, uh, if you're slightly different than, uh, you know, what, whatever is the normal or the mainstream. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean? yep. It keeps things it keeps things weird. Yeah, that's for sure. Good to be uncommon. <laughs> you remind me of my brother because my brother was like he went to school for um, well he got a, a BFA in sculpture with a minor in art history but he's he really we used and I used to paint and we used to have this like running argument where he would say paintings are the soft things you lean up against when you're looking at the sculpture and I would say <laughs> sculpture is the, the that's the hard things you sit on when you're admiring paintings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we have a lot of fun when we go to art museums together. But um, I just I, I just think that's so cool and kick ass that you are like doing this and I have another question and I have so many questions and I don't know. But we are live and if the, if you the audience have questions the number is going to pop up on the strict screen momentarily and we we welcome we welcome your input so give us a ring. Are you originally from Minneapolis? No. Um, so I uh, I have to change that on my website. But uh, about. Three years ago or so, I ended up moving over that way. Mm -hmm. uh, three or four years ago, and then I moved back to New York over the summer. Nice. And now I'm just kind of like, all right, I'm in New York again, and I don't <laughs> want to be here. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's so easy to make a living here. Yeah, really. Rent is amazingly cheap. Um, but I've been, you know, just kind of thinking about like, all right, what's the next step, and what's the next step for my artwork as well, and just trying to figure that whole thing out. But I lived in Minneapolis for three years and uh, I met a lot of really amazing people out there, uh, a lot of really excellent bands and just like a, I don't know. I, uh, I plan to go back and visit every now and again because like there are people there that I consider like friends for life yeah. kind of mm -hmm. thing. So like uh, a lot of people told me like when you first go out there, um, it's really difficult to make connections. I found it was the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. like, there's just a slew of people uh, that are really awesome. Shout outs to Paco, wherever the micro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Like sitting here talking to you, I, I'm sure it's easy for you to make friends with people. Like mm. you're super approachable and. Yeah. See, and <clears throat> people have the opposite kind of a thing with me. Well, like, maybe because of because <laughs> of things like that, you know. Like um, those, the, some of these are also uh, Inktober pieces where mm. you do a drawing a day and you just get it done. I can to touch my mic. Um, you do a drawing a day, you get it done in one day so you do 31 drawings a day kind of a thing oh that's cool and I was just like all right I'm gonna shut my brain off and I'm just gonna work with all of this that stuff. one's really cool I like that that's for uh, a um, 
oh, just switched over. Hmm. That's for uh, a festival in Texas called uh, Red River Family Fest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, the other piece that was just shown, that one with the portal, that's for a uh, tabletop RPG called Mothership, uh, in particular, like an expansion for it called Dead Planet. So, like, I'm just kind of going all over the place, sort of a what thing. What do you like to use the most? Like, do you, I mean, it looks like you use pencil. That looks like pencil. Yep. And do you like? To, do you use um, markers or, or like pen and ink? Uh, sometimes <coughs> I do pen and ink, uh, but most of the time I'm using just uh, pencil or the computer for this one in particular. Uh -huh. Like, I drew it out, I wasn't really happy with how it was looking, didn't have a lot of time, so then I pulled it into Photoshop and just started drawing over it with a uh, Wacom cool. tablet. And That's really cool. And do you ever, have you ever, oh, look at that. Have you ever had anyone approach you about um, uh, designing tattoos? Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes there are people who are like, oh, yeah, I really like this piece, so I brought it to my uh, tattoo artist and I got it, like, tattooed on me, you know? So, like, um, uh, the logo for Sutek Hexen, somebody, like, tattooed that onto their leg. Uh, another person got a logo that I made for In Solace Publications um, tattooed on their other leg, like, kind of a thing, so... Do they give you props for that? Uh, I get shout outs, yeah. All right, all right, just check <laughs> Otherwise I wouldn't know about well, it. Well, because a lot of the <clears throat> really talented um, tattoo artists, at least, I mean, f from my experience, um, getting, getting work done, is that a lot of them started out as fine artists mm -hmm. and, and have, you know, um, turned to tattooing as an expression of, of art also like the guy that I like to go to he um, he has a degree also and he um, he was a, a tagger back in the day but mm -hmm. I mean his stuff is amazing and, and the way he works and I mean, I'm sure it's it's similar I'm sure you get really focused when you're drawing something and it must piss you off when somebody interrupts you uh, yeah kind of <coughs> I, I've started taking social media off of my phone so that like I'm not like what's going on, like checking everything, mm -hmm. like notifications, I'm, I'm out, I'm out of that game, like kind yeah. of a thing, like I have Instagram, that's about it, um, and uh, I try to just kind of stay zeroed in, because uh, sometimes I think in, like lately, uh, your focus gets broken just so easily, like, so I need that weird music playing in the background, yeah. just kind of like four oh, in the morning, cool. just going on, uh, that's for, uh, my sweet baby is vile creature up in Canada, who, uh, um, yeah, that's uh, where this patch that you were admiring before <laughs> came from. God, uh, those two, uh, Vic and KW, are two wonderful human beings that I work with regularly. I just designed something for them that's going to be coming out on uh, March 1st. I don't know if I can talk about it yet, but, yeah. Well, that's soon. <laughs> yeah, March 1st, that's next week. Is it? Pretty much, pretty yes. close to it, yeah. I don't even know what day it is, so. It's a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> <Lots>. Sorry. <laughs> you're fun to joke around with. That's good. Even though you're spooky. Yeah, right? <laughs> Super spooky, and he's a vegan. Dun, 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 dun. Tag your call outs. Well, no, because we had pizza in the green room, and I was like, oh, are you hungry? And he's like, oh, I'm vegan, and I was like, thinking to myself, oh crap, you're like probably hungry. And you're nah, like, it's no. all good. Please, sir, <laughs> I have some broth. I mean, there's uh, there's dumplings in this neighborhood, so I can I can just like go and do my thing. Yeah, but there's no guarantee that those are vegan. Uh, there, I found a few places, I think. But, I yeah. think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do a little bit more research before I. Yeah, uh, you do. Before I pull the trigger on that one, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're okay. I mean, if push comes to shove, I can just have hash browns from Dunkin' Donuts, so that's all right. You're dirty. <laughs> <laughs> dirty, dirty. <laughs> <sighs> well, if you're tuning in just now, we're talking to Stephen Wilson, who is, I mean, I joke, but you are a really fine artist. Yeah, thank you. An illustrator. I appreciate hearing that. Like, um, you know, I don't think I'm the best at what I do, but I'm trying my best to be better all the time. Yeah, but you know, the other thing, too, is like the imagery that, that you like to, to work with, you don't really see that a lot. And mm -hmm. so it must be like a small number of people 
that bands, for instance, can go to to get something? There's uh, quite a number of folks that um, that I know of, at least. Like, but it's like it's sort of contained within that particular world. But like, um, there's just several people like off the top of my head that I can name. My friend Christian Dane Peterson, uh, my friend Caroline Harrison, uh, Josh Yell, uh, Fred Grabowski. All these different people that you know uh, make similar uh, pieces of artwork and have that kind of similar tone to them, you know. But everybody also does it in their own way, which is fantastic and yeah. amazing, you know. Because like I see how other people handle similar imagery, and I'm just like, dang, like, yeah. I never thought about it that way, but that's really cool. So, see, I, I'm, I'm all about that these days. Not these days, but just. Um seeing somebody that sees things differently mm -hmm. like um, I, my girlfriend was telling me a story about <clears throat> her her son did an art project in school it was run Halloween and she spotted his immediately because everybody else had bats you know and he had Batman on a branch and she's like I spotted his 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 piece of work right away and I was like yeah but that's cool that he thought that way mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know everybody else had the same thing and then here's his you know like I don't know, but I, I'd go for the more badass, like, <laughs> you know, I'd want that one. I don't know, but I think it's cool. Mm -hmm. We celebrate differences here. I love that. That's really beautiful. That was uh, the, uh, yeah, for, I think I mentioned already that mm -hmm. that was for false. I forgot, but, um, yeah. Uh, but that, that kind of stuff, like, with the, the maiden and the, and the crone and all that stuff, like, you're really good with that imagery. That's really nice. And I saw that... Um, when I was cyber stalking you I mean, <laughs> during my research, no, that you are drawn to um, occultism and existentialism as, as inspiration for, for work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, like with the occultism thing, it's kind of taken a back seat, especially lately. Like, I mean, I still kind of draw um, inspiration from different topics, you know, like weird esoteric literature and things like that. But, um, you know, it's definitely uh, set me on the course that I'm on right now. And a lot of what I do currently is just kind of like, all right, you know, like, this is how I see the world around me kind of a thing and just kind of taking it and steering it into that direction in particular. Um, you know, kind of taking bits and pieces of this and then putting it through my own lens, so. Aside from the, the contracted work for, for bands and, and that sort of thing, have you done any showings or have you put any, any pieces up for sale? Um, I put pieces up for sale on a big cartel site that I have every now and again. Uh, one, one thing that I do is I go to uh, thrift stores and I just buy like a bunch of really cheap frames that look really cool and weird and kind of gnarled and stuff. And uh, I make pieces that I put into them in particular, like, you know, just make a special piece, put it in this frame, sell it for like 40, 50 bucks each or whatever, something like that. And um, I've also been in a couple of shows. Um, one of the most recent ones was for the Necronomicon in Providence, Rhode Island uh, in 2017. And then I think there's one coming up this year too that I'll be in. Oh, I have to tell my, what, this friend of mine about you. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna wanna meet you. <clears throat> but, Bring it on. So, in in the coming months, do you have any, aside from the one project that you mentioned that's gonna be out next week, do you have any other specific things in the works that are, that are gonna be breaking out? Oh yeah, um, there's a ton of things that I, who, Sorry, everybody. I'm still working on a couple of stuff. <laughs> That's so, good. You're in demand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, I, you should be charging more than forty or fifty dollars for a piece. For a small, like oh, okay. they're like two by three, or right. three by four <laughs> inch. Like, I, I also like to keep some of my art affordable for some people, just because I know, like, you know, some people don't really have the budget to go out and spend like four or five hundred dollars on artwork. But it's like, you know, if they want to have something that's cool and original, like I feel like that's a, a, a reasonable. Yeah. like price range kind of a thing but lately I've just been working on stuff for um, uh, mostly bands a uh, band from Minneapolis called Grogus has a new album coming out that I'm uh, still working on that uh, it's amazing 
incredible <laughs> if you're into Doom. <laughs> 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 and then there's You're into doom. doom metal, you know, doom sludgy stuff, whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of the stuff that I'm working on is just mostly bands. Uh, all the names just kind of evaporated from my head. Right of course, now, because when you need it, then it's it's gone. Yeah, yeah. That's that's how it works. I, I have a feeling I'm going to be going down a, a internet rabbit hole looking up some of these bands and listening to them. I hope you enjoy them. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Well, I used to, um, when I was in high school, I used to crank uh, Murphy's Law and put in a tape, and I'd go to school and I'd listen to this one song and be like, Ugh! I'd go to school and be like, ready to go, yeah. you know? In my tie dye shirts. <laughs> <laughs> the little hippie hanging out with the skinhead punk kids in school. <laughs> so silly. Wait, there was a piece, real quick. There was a piece, I think it was either on your website. It must on your website. It was um it was a spinal column. Yeah. And it was twisted. Yep. That's uh, that's for a French death metal band called Barus. That's cool. They just put out an album called Drowned. Uh, one of my favorite artists actually did the cover of that album. Call, uh, his name is Timo Katola. Uh, he's from Finland. And then I did uh, the artwork that's featured on the back of the CD and then on the actual CD face itself and then throughout like the booklet and whatnot. That but. piece was really cool because it just looked like it. I mean, the way I saw it, it was being twisted and like turning into sand mm -hmm. or like. <laughs> that was really cool. Well, thank you. Uh, You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You're fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. And no, it's a, it's a pleasure having you. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that uh, you turned out to be somewhat normal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> uh, going back to my story from before. Or, uh, so, uh, well, we were talking about your website, and, mm -hmm. and what is that for the audience? Uh, that's www.unknownrelic.com. Okay. Uh, and then I'm also on Instagram at uh, unknown underscore relic. Okay, so definitely, definitely worth uh, checking out and going going down that uh, wormhole to to the 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 to Thank you so much for taking thank the time. You for yeah, thank you for so, having me. Yeah, you gotta come much. back. Okay, yeah, cool. So. If you're still in New York. Yeah, I mean, I come back, so uh, <laughs> family and whatnot. So. Yeah, definitely. Whenever you got something going on, there's an open seat for you. All right, great. Yeah, for so, sure. Thank for you sure, so much. Sure. I appreciate that. Stephen, thank you very much. Unknownrelic.com. Mm -hmm. Unknown relic underscore. Oh no, unknown underscore relic. On Instagram. On Instagram. On yep. Instagram. Don't try and find him on Face Place or Twitter. He's not on it. I'm on Twitter, but oh, he's on the Twitter. Yeah, there are the links. There are the links. There are the links to the Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm John Griffith. I'm Kara Kelda.